I thought they were appalling scenes. I think these are these could very well be exactly the officers that responded to that incident the other day. So a couple of days ago, they're doing probably the most traumatic scene and incident they'll ever attend in their policing careers. And then literally a day or two later, they're having to face an angry and violent mob who are trying to do them some injury and harm. I thought they were appalling scenes. I can understand the anger, the emotions, the frustration, the desire for information. But policing has to work within the law, has to work within what information they are allowed to release and what is uh, what is in best interest to release. And they've still got an active investigation going. They've still got a suspect in custody. They still have to go through some interviews with them. People are entitled to the right to silence and police officers who are then investigating offences can challenge that right to silence. But to challenge it, you have to have the information, the evidence. That's probably what they are still gathering. So they can law lawfully and properly challenge the suspect during an interview. So then they can put that those those questions, those responses before a call if charges are preferred. So there's a process they have to go through. I understand the public get frustrated with it. Police officers get frustrated with, with the delays, the time it takes. But there's a process they have to go through. Um, and I think for those officers to come under attack, by, by the crowds, as we saw last night, and sustain over 20 injuries, I think it's totally unacceptable. And I think people in authority, there are people in power who actually should be careful with the language they are using, the, the thinly veiled suggestions they are putting out there, they almost like drop the hint, but then don't go and actually confirm it. it you know, there are suggestions that this could happen. People take take those on board, and then it, they're all like, I describe them as almost like pub conversations. These used to be conversations that happened in pubs between people. People get quite up, upset. You know, I tell you something, you tell someone else, and before we've left the door of the pub, it's factual, it's become true. So the internet or sort of social media has become that vehicle for um, false information, for rumour, innuendo, suggestions, um, and people are acting on it, and they really need to try and get the facts out and the police need to do some work in this respect in trying to release as much as many of the facts as they can without prejudicing prejudicing any investigation or any possible court case which is a difficult balance and difficult line but we need to be the police need to be much better at putting some more factual information out some more factual um timeline i see i see the american police do this i think a lot better than we do in the uk we are still playing catch up with social media and how information is now relayed to people and how information received and get their, 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 their details of what's gone on. America tend to do almost like a timeline. The units that attended, the type of call they were called to, some of the details of what they found when they got there, um, and almost then answer some, some questions.
some valid questions about what's happened. I think UK policing needs to have a look, maybe the College of Policing, have a look again at the media guidelines because social media is now the vehicle that people go to, first of all, to get their information. And you could see people were extremely angry and upset last night because they've obviously been reading stuff, taking it as, as true, and then pass that on to their friends. And then there's a whole crowd of people who are hearing rumours and they believe it's factual. It's, it's literally, I think it's a, it's a street or two away from where the incident took place. So you're right within the heart of the people that, that have suffered this, this awful incident. Um, and there are people smashing up walls and, and setting cars on fire, etc. literally a few roads away. I, I just thought it was, it was the, the, the actions were deplorable. Um, I understand the anger, the frustration, the desire for information, but there, do, there does need to be some calm, there needs to be some sensible heads. Um, the, the police investigation has to take its course legally uh, and properly, but to go around, I think it was just, it was just again, uh, for some there, not all, for some, it was just an excuse for wanton violence. And we see this quite often when, when it, you know, something, something similar, where there's a group of people get quite angry. There are others that attach themselves to it. It's just an excuse for them for wanton violence. There are people within that crowd who are, who are rightly visibly upset and angry. But then there are others that turn up who just want to have, you sort of want like slapping each other on the back and laughing and joking. They are not there with any respect to families. They're not. They're just there because it's an excuse to go out and smash things up, throw things at the police and, and just be just be unruly and disorderly. Yeah, some of those involved in those in those actions of disorder and violence last night were not thinking about the family at all. Uh, just thinking about themselves, what they want to say, what they want to do. But the families also have to come first in the investigation. So any information that, that is going to be released has to go to the families first. They must know what, what's they must be told as much as, as police can about the investigation before it goes uh, public, before it goes on, on into any media channels or newspapers, etc. You have to look after the families first. You have to take their thoughts and views into account. And I think there was a there was a, a section of that group last night who were just literally there for themselves. They've got no concern for the families at all. Um, they're not considering the family um, and what they are going through at the moment. I, I, think, I just think it was appalling actions taken by, by some of those, not all of them, there were some there with genuine, genuine frustration and anger about what's happened literally around the corner. But there, there was a section of that group who just wanted to commit offences, violence, disorder, smash things up and throw things at the police officers. Well, I think we get something that, that's, that's advertised, billed as a vigil. Um, and you expect that to be quite dignified. Um, the police officers that deployed there would be in, in just in normal police uniform. There would be like public order trained officers, as we saw last night with the yellow, yellow police vans. Um, nearby or on standby, I would have the, 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 the kit on on those vans. But you need the officers that are trained in public order tactics. Now, many of those officers may not have been, they're just, they're just, it's just, they are response officers. They're the ones that deal with the 999 calls like we had the other day. They'd be the ones that, that, that are going to these incidents. They may not have all been through public order training. So be able to put all the kits on the helmets, the, the overalls, the gloves, and use the shields properly. Um, there was a, a number of them that, that clearly had been trained, but for that type of event, you, you wouldn't expect to have to deploy what's called riot police, but public order trained officers to deal with a crowd that, that's come down to, ostensibly, they were going down to show their respects and take part in like a vigil for, and, and remember what had, had taken place, the awful incident. So I think for the, for the, the management, um, you would just have a number of officers ready and a, a very small number of officers because you're only all you're doing on paper when you look at it the information is managing the crowd just literally making sure people are safe when they turn up uh, and then leave I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have expected them to either even when you go through like the what is what might happen at this event I would I would not expect them to to anticipate it or anybody to anticipate it it was going to descend into the type of disorder the serious disorder we saw last night so I think it, it was, they probably didn't have the officers ready. They had to call them in, had to call in mutual aid from other forces, which all takes time. You've got to gather the officers together, put them in vehicles, and then travel the distance from Cheshire, North Wales, etc., to the location and then assist the Merseyside officers. So that all takes time in getting the right officers with the right equipment into that area to deal with the disorder.